What is going on, YouTube? Today I'll be uh, going over how I prep my cards for grading, whether it be PSA when it reopens, HGA if you're lucky enough to get in, or CSG, which is about to hike up their prices, so I might as well get a bulk submission in before they do that. I know they are in a, a backlog now, so it could end up being like PSA and shut down until they clear everything up. However, I did send in an express uh, it was like April 6th I shipped out the, the uh, th I shipped out three cards. Uh, it, it was entered in April 8th and then shipped back actually April 21st. So I think it was about 13 business, or 13 days I should say. So that's nice. Uh, that's, so I got it in just in time. And I'll be having a reveal on that once I get them in hopefully sometime next week. Uh, but right now I am going through some baseball cards I'm going to send in. And I just happened to look around and find two cards that I need to prep or verify if I should even send them in. And of course, the first card is a Tyler Naquin rookie card. And this is from 2016 update. So Tyler's been in baseball for quite a few years. Right now he's actually batting pretty well. Uh, let's bring up the stats for him. I can't remember what exactly his average was. I'm going to bring it up here. Okay, so right now Tyler Nykman leads... Not least, I have to say, he's in second for RBIs and home runs. So he has six home runs and 18 RBIs. He's only batting 269, but the person in front of him is J.D. Martinez with seven homers and 21 RBIs. And Tyler is now playing for the Cincinnati Reds. So he did move from Cleveland, which in baseball everybody moves around all the time. <clears throat> so right now Tyler is a 273 career hitter he is probably having one of his best starts I would say uh, I'm not saying that he's going to hold on and continue to play this way he has only had 52 at bats but looking at most of his seasons last year he only did 218 he had four home runs and 20 RBIs, and already half of the at-bats, he's already doubled what he had last year. And in 2019, he totaled 10 home runs and 34 RBIs. So right there, with a batting average of 288. So when he's healthy, you know, he only played 40 games last year. Of course, it was a shortened season. The year before that was 89 games. And then... Of course, it was a rocky start. He had 61, 20, 18, and in 2017, he only played 19. But his rookie year, 2016, <clears throat> he batted 296, 14 home runs, and 43 RBIs, which is pretty solid uh, in your rookie year with 12 or 18 doubles and five triples. He is pretty. Much, he is a speedster. He's not super fast. He did get six stolen bases a rookie year, but I do believe he's a player that probably could be consistent. Um, so it's kind of a, a gamble to send out, but it is what it is. Now, when I grade cards, I will leave links in <clears throat> the description, but this is a nice tool. It's called a centering tool. kind of gives you an idea what cards could center, depending on the company. I don't know what PSA does as far as how they, <clears throat> they grade their cards. I know a lot of companies are using AI now, uh, HDA, as well as um, CSB, uh, CSG, and I know PSA just acquired a company to do that type of grading, which is, of course, AI. Right here, let's go to the centering tool. Let's see here, let's bring this up and see. Now, some of these... Some of these baseball cards are a little hard to determine what the best centering is. I guess if you go by the bottom, 
first you gotta get it lined up and sometimes it's it moves around on you or the card is not center at all there we go I think I got it kind of matched up there so going based upon this yeah, it's really it's really hard to tell exactly where it ends or where it begins it's kind of the same thing for the back so I guess it's a it's a gamble I don't know now as far as corners go I do have this magnifying glass I don't know if you'll be able to see it I guess you will uh, corner looks decent that corner looks pretty good uh, could be just the reflection and that corner don't look too bad I'll give it a Looks uh, maybe the top right corner looks a little a little soft as you can see kind of the white speckle but it could be a nine and nine point five. So what I do is I use a microfiber cloth so I'm going to set it on the cloth and then I'm going to hold it with one end and then I'm going to take another microfiber cloth which you can use I usually clean my glasses with and then I'm kind of just going to wipe down the card Flip it around. Of course, that's why I'm wearing gloves. That way you don't get any fingerprints on the oil from your skin. Sometimes you're messing around and you touch it and then you don't realize it as you're putting it in the card. Or putting it into a sleeve. And everything I use here I will post on um, in the description whether I got it from eBay or if I got it from Amazon. I will actually do both. Just in case you're an Amazon member. So once I clump, I might not send this in, is right there. It looks like a divot. like an indention in the card huh. I'm not exactly sure what that is no I don't think it's going to be a candidate to be graded that's why you always want to check and double check your cards just in case as you can see there we go it is like a divot in the card you could send it out but you're talking now especially with that right hand corner or the upper right corner and that you're very well looking at a possibly 8 8.5 grade I doubt it will be a 9 or a 10. Definitely not a 10. So, I guess, so I'm so i going to pass on this one. 
Then the next one right now, this guy is the hottest pitcher in baseball. And this is Corbin Burns. And Corbin Burns right now sits at, he is ranked fourth with 40 strikeouts. He has pitched 24 in the third inning and four starts. He is 2-1 with the, with the second best ERA besides Jacob DeGrom with a point. 37 ERA for baseball that's that's fantastic and right now he actually has <clears throat> the best whip which is walk and hits per inning at .33 and his batting average or the opponent's batting average is .098 that's he's barely allowed he's only allowed eight total hits this whole year so far in his five in his four starts that's solid. That's right now great. So this is his rookie card from 2019 Series 1. And of course, if anybody knows 2019 Series 1, there was really no big rookies. Except for Michael Kopex. But we all know Michael Kopex had to go on the injured reserve as he or DL with Tommy John surgery. And he sat out the whole season last year. So series one was basically this, and then everybody kept getting Cedric Mullins, which is actually having a pretty solid start to the year this year, but not sure it'll be consistent enough. But let's take a look at this card just from the naked eye. I mean, it looks pretty solid. Maybe that corner. Maybe soft corner there. Maybe there. Of course, kind of look at the card to see if there you see any type of divots like I saw in the other one. That corner don't look too bad. I mean, so far the card looks pretty solid. Maybe that. I just have, I'll have to take a closer look. Looks a little I don't look well maybe that corner. I don't think it'll get a ten because that corner looks a little But there is a chance it could grade at a 9 or a 9.5. You know, just depending on the centering, which this one might be a better chance, better card to look at centering because it's the bottom and the right are going to have a better measuring tool as far as what exactly you're looking for. So, okay, it's all matched up. And it looks like the left, the right hand side, that right there where the three is, is where that centering is. If we go to the bottom, and it's three down there. So let's say centering is pretty, pretty good. So this one I am gonna send in. All right, so let's do this again. So you want to be careful. So you're going to hold this down like this. Make sure to turn that off. Now I'm going to wipe off the card gently. Nothing crazy. And one over. Now the back. All right, kind of look closer in the card. All right now, now I got my sleeve. Now you want to be gentle when you put it in there because this is where you can ding up corners. Some people cut the sleeve. 
as you see it went in the good and slide it in so not all the way at the bottom but because I got the glove on I could push it down so now I'm going to take a post it tab the reason why I want to put the post it tab in it is basically when they put the when they pull the card out it's going to be much easier for, pull the, for them to pull the card out with the tab on it and then I get my card saver now there's a lot of you can get card card savers are kind of one in a million now you have I've seen PSA collector has his own now I know CSG you can actually if you sign up now they're actually giving you a starter kit which is actually a box and I believe you get a hundred sleeves and 50 semi rigid or card saver one type uh, protectors for it you you can ship them in top loaders however I think with the room that's in here it's very nice I have really only had one card so far that I've had graded be terrible and it was basically because I missed some surface issues which is a mosaic basketball card which is it's known known to have um, some pretty bad surfaces so then I'm just gonna slide it careful all right it's in there some people bang on it like you would a top loader I, I don't know if I want to do that okay so there's a Corbin Burns rookie card as you can see that's how I take a card clean it off and slide it into a card saver put that over there for now now I do have 2021 cards these I have already cleaned as you can see I already have some Tristan McKenzie you know some of these I may hold off on the pictures and just wait especially the rookie pictures wait for now but the ones I do want to send out Mick Magnigal everybody knows right now he is he, last year he was the best two strike hitter in the league which is pretty solid for a rookie he was a sleeper because you had Danny Minnick and you had Lewis Robert come up and nobody really expected nobody really saw him come out of nowhere and just really be an excellent batter to be so efficient with two strikes is very hard in baseball and right now Let's see here stat wise it's pitching let me so I have it pulled up that is Tyler Nyquin so let's back this up <clears throat> Okay, select player pool, and we'll go to rookies. And those are not rookies. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. Now I'm gonna go to hits. And Nick Mandigal right now. He is tied for third place with hits. He has 17 hits and 57 at-bats. Two doubles, three triples. He's not a home run hitter. He usually bats ninth or leadoff, so therefore his RBIs aren't going to be crazy high. But he's batting 298 with an on-base percentage of 359. So he's getting on base, which is what you want. So I'm a big fan of Dan. Well, I'm a White Sox fan, so of course... Danny Menick is going to be one of those top ones. And then, of course, you have Alec Baum, who last year had a great year, year as a rookie. Of course, this year he is not a rookie anymore. He did take the minimum. He actually batted 160 times, which the minimum is 130. 
So going into this year, he is no longer a rookie. And of course, this is the 1986 Topps throwback. You have the Topps Heritage in action and his regular Topps. And then the Redux for 1952. So those cards I'm going to want to send out. And then you have Dylan Carlson, which is <clears throat> right now Dylan Carlson, as far as like he's a top prospect that everybody's sending cards, everybody's sending their cards out. I think there is people have gotten PSA tens back from Dylan Carlson, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm gonna want to get those out. Of course, this is his top heritage in action. I love these in action cards. I think they look very nice. Something different. But if we go and look at Dill Carlson right now, he's actually he's only batting 250, but three home runs and 11 RBIs, and he's getting on base percentage of 370. He's actually getting on base more than Nick Mandigal, which is what the team wants, as he's taking 10 walks, so he's getting on, which is run support for his team. Now the other rookie that everybody is getting graded is Bobby Dulick from the Boston Red Sox. He is not doing great right now. <clears throat> He's batting 269 with an on-base percentage of 333. He is striking out a lot right now. 20 strikeouts and only 4 RBIs with 0 home runs. But I do think he is somebody that can change it around. So those cards I am going to want to send out. And of course you have Joe. These ones I'm, I will clean up before I sleeve them. And Joe Adele, which was probably the featured rookie of the set. The only problem is he is not even in the majors right now. He is actually in the minor leagues. But the Angels have a pretty stacked team right now, so more work for him is probably better off. As he wasn't, last year he kind of had a disappointing season when he got called up. But it is what it is. Some, some you know, rookies, they're hot. Some rookies are cold. That's baseball. I definitely want to get his stuff. And then there's some more Dylan Carlson. There's another Bobby Dulwick. Or oh, that's the same one, sorry. And then these are the 52. I love the 52 cards. These are very cool. As you can see, they have like the signature. Of course, it's not a real signature. But looking at this card, it's probably not going to be a candidate for grading. As you can see, left to right, it is very, very off center. And the same with top to bottom. I look at the Joe Adele. Not as bad. So if we line it up. Alright, if you line it up, you see the left side is kind of in between the two and the three. And this one is a pretty similar. Uh, if you look at the three there, you see that gap, and then there it's so left to right's a little off center. And then if you look at top to bottom, looks like it's at the three, and at the bottom, the three is slightly off. So, as far as centering wise, probably not something I want to send in. Now, however, this is a lot better of a centering than, of course, the Dylan Carlson. As you can see how off the left is. You see how narrow that is, how thick that is from top to bottom. Kind of the same result. Top. <clears throat> well, the top and bottom might be a more centered. Actually, I think the top and bottom is pretty nice. It's the left and right that's really off. So I won't send these out. Now, let's look at these again. Now, the in-action card, 
that actually looks like it's great centering. I'm not gonna take this one out of the sleeve. These were pre-wiped down when I put them in the sleeve. But right here, okay. So the three. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, you know what? The sleeve is messing with it. All right. There we go. All right, so the three, you're looking at the three. So yeah, it looks like this is pretty good centering. Although it just keeps, keeps sliding. All right, there we go. So three, a little off on the top or the side. But top to bottom looks pretty good. Actually, here we go. This is much better. Now you always want to measure, but sometimes the back is off too. Well, let's get that lined up. And there we go. So Probably three is what you're looking at, only I see in two, three there. So maybe not the back. Although it looks good. The centering tool is not really lining up. So if I do the three, uh, maybe it's not. So we got the three there. And that's in a pain. All right, so three on the board to there, three kind of there. And both the threes are not. Now, so maybe the back is a little more off center. Uh, but I will take the chance on that one. But sometimes the grading tool, you can't line up efficiently. So it's kind of hard to say, oh yeah, it's not gonna work. Or it's really off center. I mean, it looks pretty, pretty close. That is all set. All right, let's see if we can measure the Joe Adele card. So I guess we're lining up from here, here, here. I think you kind of see a border somewhat. They don't make it easy, that's for sure. All 
Alright, I think that should do the trick. Three. Three. I mean, it looks pretty good. So, let's leave that one up. First, let's clean it off. Now there is another method you could do to help out with centering is if you have a printer that has at least 4800 dpi or scanner I should say you probably could scan the card and blow it up on your screen and get a better idea visually of what um, the centering looks like. Some people I mean I think that's how they might do it only they probably have a more sophisticated so there you go a more sophisticated type of AI all right so that's that now we're looking at this Bobby Delvick um, I can already tell left to right it's not gonna be Yeah, left to right is off. Top to bottom might be okay, but left to right. So I'll probably hold off on that one too. So I got these two, I'll probably put, I'll sell on eBay. All right, so those are good. So now we need us Dylan Carlson's these look good. I kind of pre-checked them already. Although, no, I didn't do a good job because that left to right looks terrible. You can see how small that is. So that's a no. Uh, this one, same thing, left to right. Nope. And this one, a little bit better left to right. Top to bottom. Top looks a little bit top heavy. So I'm just going to say no on that one too. The Alex Bomb, left to right, top to bottom, hmm, suspect. Left to right here, no, not good. And as far as his rookie cards, these actually look pretty solid. Let's try this thing again. So I guess I'm gonna go by the the two. Or is it a three? If you go by the three. I can't really tell. Yeah, I don't know about the centering tool. I don't know. I guess you can leave a comment below and kind of tell me what you guys think. To me, I think this looks pretty solid. Surface looks really good. It's just really maybe back here no because the line up there i don't i don't know it's hard to say i will i will take my chances on that one but as far as corners go Corners look pretty solid. Sleeve it. Let's 
tag it, and then I do this. We just kind of like. Kind of flex it. Stretch it out. Hopefully it slides in a little bit easier. Sometimes you have the slip will get caught on that tab. Now let's check this last one. Well, first let's look at this. This one actually looks really good. Maybe left to right a little bit off. I'll send that one out. I like that one. And then here is the other one. <clears throat> this one left to right looks pretty good. Uh, top to bottom, definitely off. I will not be sending that one in. And then let's look at the Nick Mandigals. This is another one, top to bottom, does not look good. This one, this one looks pretty good. I like, this one looks pretty good. I will send this one in. I'm probably going to buy one of those actual magnifying glasses that sit on the table. That one just kind of doesn't really help out, doesn't really show much. So let's put this one in. All right, picture wise, I know I've said I wasn't going to, but if we look at rookie pitchers, Ian Anderson is pitching ERA 327. Below him, Dane Dunning's at 3.6. Um, yeah, I don't know. In four starts, probably going to hold off. Now, if it was a Trevor Rogers, that'd be a different story. When you have an ERA of 1.64 striking out 31 people that's pretty solid um, <clears throat> you got some of these do not have rookie cards yet uh, Ryan Weathers have not seen anything on him just yet maybe if you're looking for rookie cards or some of these, I guess you can go to first Bowman cards. A lot of them do have a first Bowman card from anywhere. Like Ryan Weathers has a 2018 Bowman draft. If you want like the first Bowman cards. So yeah, I guess I'll, I'll hold off on the pitchers for right now. So basically, that is my process of how I get cards ready to ship off. And of course, you always gotta, you know, just double check your cards, make sure. Unless you're doing it for your personal collection and you don't really care for the grade, you just want it slabbed, then yeah, I would say go for it. But you really, if you're trying to get a grade to flip it, sell it, or hold on to it and sell it, then you're gonna wanna definitely double check 
your cards. But let me just go over exactly what cards I'm sending out. So there's a centering tool. Alright. So with base with with all my cards, I like to put them in the numerical order if I can. And of course these are a little bit different, so I'll just put them in that way. Alright. So here's the cards I'm going to send out. I have a Bo Jackson rookie card from 1987. And then you have Nolan Ryan from 1987. And then I have one, two, three, four, five Big Mac Mark McGuire rookie cards. And not all of these are going to get a high grade. But they're in pretty good shape for 1987. I bought a few of them and then realized. Not realized, but <clears throat> I was at my dad's and he actually found some cards of mine. And they actually were in like the boxes, not hobby box type of thing, but older cards. They sold them in sets if you really wanted them. Or if you wanted a set. So I had some set boxes which had that in there. And it also had the Barry Bonds 1987, which I actually have out to be engraved with HGA. So once I get those in, I will have those up. And then you have the Barry Larkin, Barry Larkin rookie card from 1987. And then we go to 1995 with the Pedro Martinez Bowman. This one I cracked open out of another grading service, and I can already tell that grading service was kind of full of crap. As you can see from left to right, it's not centered at all. And the same thing for top to bottom. But this is, or 92, not 1995, sorry. But this is a nice card. So if it's an 8 or a 9, I'll take it. It really doesn't matter. And then like those other sets, I mean this card is really cool. 1982 Upper Deck. As you can see, the Ken Griffey Jr. Kind of like a 3D card. What's cool about this one is it's actually got the gold seal on the back. It was part of a, a set, and it was exclusive with the gold seal. So I'm going to send that in. And then this one's really cool. This one is Ken Griffey Sr., Jr., and his brother Craig. It's called Bloodlines. It's a pretty cool card. And this also has, as you can see, the gold. And then another upper deck. The Silver Signature Series, Record Pace, Ken Griffey Jr., I looked over this one, it's not in terrible shape. Maybe some dings on the corners, but from, you know, as you can see, this is what I'm talking about. As you can see here, how that's silver. And then you look at this one, this one is gold. So it was a special set that they had. And then, of course, big White Sox fan, and I have a paper. Bowman first prospect of Jose Abreu. He has started off slow this year, but for what he's done in his career so far, he's pretty solid. I think he'll bounce back. And then I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten of his rookie cards. So I believe this is 2014. 
yeah 2014 sending those in and then the gold parallel and this of course every gold for baseball is numbered from the year so of course this one is numbered out of 2014 since that's what year it comes out of and then a Jose Urias of course helped the Dodgers win the World Series last year and he's actually pitching pretty solid this year And Trevor Story. And of course the batting champ, Tim Anderson. And as much as not a Cubs fan, this guy's pretty solid hitter, home run hitter, RBI, Wilson Contreras. And then of course we got from 2017. Mitch Hanniger, and this is the Rainbow Foil rookie. And this is a Matt Olson. And then we have a Brandon Woodruff. And that one is, this one's 2018. Of course, 2018 is definitely the hottest baseball series you can get. Series 2, you have Glaber Torres, and of course you have Ronald Acuna Jr. Short Prince in there. Those are their first true rookie cards, um, but the updates still, for both of them, still sell well. Shohei Atani's in that set. As this one, I have the Shohei Atani rookie debut. They don't sell as well, at, or I should say they don't sell as high. But Fernando Tatis' rookie debut is selling for pretty good money. And that's pretty much the only Otani rookie card I have. And then Michael Kopech. And then here's another Fernando Tatis rookie debut paper. And then I got two Tommy Edmond. From the Cardinals. And this one is cool. I mean, if anybody remembers the old baseball or basketball beam team, this is a, from the Stadium Club. This one is the Ronald Acuna from 2019. Yeah, beam team. I think it's a pretty cool card. And Ronald Acuna is off to another hot start this year. And then, of course, I have. From 2020 Stadium Club, I have Boba Shet, which is probably the coolest looking card. That is just a cool photography set. Stadium Club series has probably the best photos of any set. I mean, that just looks cool. And then this is the Bowman Platinum. This is the Parallel. I forget which Parallel this is called. But... Boba Shett rookie card. Of course, he's off to a hot start again of this season as well. Send that out. And then when I send or when I submit my cards, I actually make a video on that. I always do paper first, and then the chrome lat in the back because they're different sets. So if you put them by year in chronological order by year, it helps them enter the system. If you have your cards all over the place, I feel like it may. In a sense, it does probably take a little bit longer. Now, where if you have the cards in chronological order, number order, they can go in there and verify those cards as fast as possible. Anything you can do to get your cards in and out as quick as possible is what I like to do. Uh, I know I've watched, like, PSA collectors kind of pointed that out for me, uh, for everybody that I know, and it's actually pretty smart. Is because if I'm, I'm taking these cards and they're in order like they are, it is going to be much easier for me to go over them and put them in the system without having any issues as well as getting them in and out of the system you know and then i have here's more jose abreu's these are the first bowman's four five six i got six six from the these are the bowman chromes now bowman chrome does sell a lot more than the paper 
So I got some of those, I bought some of those. And then I have the Topps Chrome. I'm gonna say this is the X Factor Prism. This is a pretty cool card. Not numbered. And then this one I got a great deal. This is the Topps Chrome Jose Abreu Auto. And this is on card. Which is nice about Topps Chrome is Topps Chrome is always on card. So I'll send that out. And then David Fletcher's having a pretty great year. And I know he had a great year last year too. This isn't a Topps card. This is from Panini or Optic Donruss. This is the rated rookie. And as you can see, there's no affiliative teams on there, but they do have the Players Association license, so they could use player names, just not team logos. I like Optic. I think it's a cool card. Send that one out. And then this one is a Tristan McKenzie Silver. Since it's a prism, or you call it Halo, everybody calls it either Halo or they, they call it the Silver Prism or Silver. Just depends on what you call it. I know prisms are supposed to be called silver. And and this is warming up an appendix of Trinson and Kenzie. And of course Shane Bieber who has had a hot start. This is the Oh man, I forget which parallel this is called again. I think it's called the Cosmic Mist. I'm not sure, but you know everybody knows Prism. Prism is like the hottest card to get as far as basketball and football. Baseball, you can get them. It's, it's just they don't have team affiliates, so it's I guess it's not as hot. But I still think this is a cool card. And Shane Bieber just set a record in the modern era for having four consecutive games with ten plus strikeouts. And we have a first Bowman of Robert Pawson. And as another rookie who's off to a hot start is Seth Brown. And if let's, let's pull up his stats as far as rookies. Well, I don't know if he's considered a rookie this year. Let's go back and I'll go up to the Oakland A's or Athletics. Now, it could be wrong. I could have looked at the wrong, but here's Seth Brown. <clears throat> I guess he's having a solid year. He's been 265, three home runs, and six. So, I don't know. I may hold off on that. I, I don't know what I was looking at. But, as you can see, I'll probably send it out. It is an auto. You never know. And then everybody knows about Wilson or Willie Castro. Really hot, really hot. Or at least he was. I don't know. He might have cooled down. Yeah, he definitely did cool down. Never mind. He was hot last year. Well, I apologize. I was wrong on that one. But this is his on-card auto as well. His rookie auto. I'll send it out just in case he gets hot. And, well, I forgot to put this in chronological order. But this is the Corbin Burns. And then, of course, you have... The Joe Adele, Mandigal, Bomb, the Bomb 52, and the Dylan Carlson in action. Let's put these in order. 43. I already put them in order. Okay. So those I'm going to put, I got to put those in another order. Or put them by the paper. Eighteen. And this is a series one. Yep, there goes that. And then before that, there's this. All right, and then baseball is all set. Now I just need to enter them in. And then once I get, and I will post, I will show you how I enter my cards in, because uh, some of the sets are new. Therefore, you kind of have to work, do a workaround with some of them. My next video is going to be, I do have a couple hockey, some UFC Chrome, 
but then I have some football and I have uh, basketball that we'll go over. So this will be probably a three-part series. Uh, hopefully to release these on Monday, which is what, April 26th? All right, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.